honestly expressing yourself. Now, it is very difficult to do. I mean, it, it is easy for me to put on a show and be cocky yeah. and be flooded with a cocky feeling and then yeah. feel like pretty cool and all that. Or I can f make all kinds of phony things, you see what I mean? Blinded by it. Or I can show you some f really fancy movement. But to express oneself honestly, not lying to oneself, and to express myself honestly, not that, my friend, is <laughs> very hard to do. And you have to train. You have to keep your reflexes so that when you want it, it's there. When you want to move, you're moving. And when you move, you are determined to move. Not taking one inch, not anything less than that. If I want to punch, I'm gonna do it, man. <laughs> Bienvenido, aloha bati, anyan haseyo, soy Scott from Waywater Arts. Welcome to episode four of my striking series. Today I'm going to wrap up, for now, the front leg roundhouse. Now in episode one, I started with beginners, talked about how we use the roundhouse in sport taekwondo. Episode two and three expanded upon that uh, a little bit more and it kind of advanced the technique for from beginner to, to intermediate. So, episode four, I wanna focus on the front leg roundhouse to be used in whatever, whatever your, whatever your martial art is. Um, I want you to be able to understand the principles of the front leg roundhouse because I really think it's a little underutilized in combat sports or a competition, whatever, whatever you want it to be, MMA competition. The thing with Taekwondo, we're limited to, we have to kick above the waist. That's why Taekwondo kicks are known for their speed, their power, and their ability to get those roundhouses up nice and high. Because in Taekwondo sport, we cannot kick below the hips. This, we cannot kick the legs, we can't kick the knees, we can't kick down there. So, that leaves us available to talk about the front leg roundhouse when you use it for mixed martial art purposes and using it to strike the leg, strike the knee, strike that uh, lower calf right there. You'd be surprised at, if you would practice this, the efficiency of it, the effectiveness that we can get out of it, and I want to quote one of my uh, most biggest inspirations, Sifu Lee. Um, thank you so much for all you've done for martial arts and for philosophy in life. Um, I get a little <clears throat> emotional when I talk about um, Bruce Lee, but because uh, he was a huge inspiration for me. So, Jeet Kune Do philosophy says anything goes in martial arts or in life too and in life we can use that front leg roundhouse to strike the the legs and immobilize them one of the things that sifu lee talked about um in his book was he used his longest reach weapon 75 to 90 percent of the time what that means is your longest reach weapon when you're here is obviously the jab, jab punch, jab leg. Your longest weapon, and the longest weapon is what is closest to your opponent. So when you're using, and he talks about using your, your strong side forward, I like to mix up. I really don't feel I have a strong side um, obviously, there's some kicks that I'm better at from this position. There's some kicks I'm better at from that position. So I don't try to think too much about, let's put my strongest side forward. What I want to think about is using the path of least resistance. Think about the principles of water. 
If your opponent, it depends on what your opponent's doing, what his stance is, how you have to fit in with him to use the path of least resistance to score whatever point that you need or, you know, set up. Set, you, the front leg roundhouse is great for setting up further techniques. So getting back to Jeet Kundo philosophy, Sifu Lee said that he would he wrote in one of his books that his lead, his lead jab, lead leg, he used 75 to 90% of the time in sparring and reserved the back the furthest away for the power and he only used that when it was necessary, you know, when it was set up by the front. So boom, boom, pop. You know, so 75% to 90% he was doing lead. That other 25 to 10%, that's when he would come with the backhand. And so, you know, whatever side is forward, 75, 90%, 75, 90%, then you come in with that 25, 10% back where the power really is. But you don't wanna, the problem with using your, your the back here is that it leaves you really open to strikes. When you're when you're centered with using your front your front side, you're able to you know dodge stuff and use use that mainly for you you know you use that lead leg also. You don't just use it for scoring points. You use it for defense too. That front side facing here, you really need to be able to channel this front end, whatever end is facing your opponent closer, that is your lead punch, that is your lead kick, and this is also your lead block and your lead defense. So that, that's why I think Bruce really stressed having the strong side forward, because that's where you're gonna do the majority of your defense and your striking. So that's G Kundo philosophy. Getting back to the front leg roundhouse to be used as a setup kick, or even to, you know, break, uh, immobilize their knee, weak points in MMA, the, the joints, of course the joints, the whole jujitsu is centered around the weak points, the joints, getting at them. How we can add striking to that is that front leg roundhouse. And so I'll just go over a little bit about the principles now that we got out of the idea that this is just strictly for Taekwondo. This is for all combat sports. So lead leg, lead leg roundhouse. So if you're just starting with the, with the uh, front leg roundhouse, one of the things that you wanna think about, keep that alignment and structure up, keep your posture open, you're relaxed, you have to have a nice bounce, and then you have to be able to use your front side and your back side to be able to block when you strike. Because when you come in and to make it as realistic as possible, you know, of course, I'm kicking a bag, but if we can move it around a little bit here, you can really start to get a feel for angles, timing, distance. Those things are all huge, 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 huge. So you have to fit in with your opponent. And then, here, and then you can set up whatever punch you want. So really, that front leg roundhouse, it can collapse their knee, it can distract them, and then you come, that's the setup kick, that's the setup kick. Then you come in with whatever striking you want, elbow, whatever you want, you wanna uh, start coming in, go into them. You know, the, the possibilities are unlimited. In MMA and martial arts, I love, love, love the freedom that you have to be able to integrate everything you've learned and practiced and then use it whenever it's available. So you have to be creative. Martial arts, it's an art. You're being creative in your striking, you're being creative in your defense, creating openings, and then coming in with whatever strikes that you want. But we have to build that base first. I talk about Tai Chi base. Tai Chi teaches us to shift our weight and to be balanced no matter what leg we're on. So in martial arts, when you're striking, you need to be able to be balanced and centered because when you strike, your opponent's gonna strike you back. And you really, it's, <laughs> when you're actually out there and you're moving around and your opponent's moving around, there's adrenaline, 
everything that you trained, you better hope that it's going to be there for when you need it because uh, you can get tired real quick if your cardio is not up the par and there's just so many things that go into it. But coming back to that front leg roundhouse, martial arts, creative, creating openings so that you can come in with whatever strike that you want. But you have to build that base first. Know your distance, know your distance, know your timing, know your reach, and then be able to switch up the timing so that you can confuse your opponent so that they can't time you back. So being able to get you know good footwork that all plays a huge part in your striking um, style. And I don't like to use the word style too much because each of us have our own unique signature, let's call it, our own unique martial arts signature. And for me, that front leg roundhouse should really be um, trained. It should be trained. You know, we can strike that knee, the leg, the weak point, um, use it as a diversion and opening, creating openings. So, um, I'll wrap that up for episode four of my front leg roundhouse. Um, and I hope it was useful to all you strikers out there. And, um, please, I really appreciate feedback, um, things you want to see. I think moving on, I'm going to be moving on past the front leg roundhouse. And I'm going to be moving into one of my favorite kicks, the, the side kick. So that'll be episode five. Oh, one last thing I forgot to talk about. So one of my favorite striking uh, uh, techniques is the front leg roundhouse to the face. And unfortunately with this bag, I'm a little limited to how high I can kick it on the face. Um, but the face, you know, kind of starts here. That front leg roundhouse, I used to use that in Olympic style Taekwondo to score three immediate points. And that uh, that was one of my favorite kicks is that, is that front leg uh, roundhouse to the head. So when you're doing that front leg roundhouse, the first thing that you want to think about always is your alignment, keeping that structure open, having a nice bounce. To start with, to train that front leg roundhouse to the face, you really need to be able to switch that weight to the back, bring that leg up here, you extend it, and the further back you go, the further back you lean, the higher you can kick. So if you're just training, it'll, if you're just starting that, uh, getting the base of it is very important. So coming back here, just like that. And then you have to be able to bring that leg down quickly. A lot of times when I would score on that front leg roundhouse to the head, it was a counter. I used it as a counter. When my opponent was coming in at me, I would time him. I would see his first kick, and as he's coming in, he'd do his first kick. As he's transitioning to that second kick, that's when I would go, and I was able to score quite uh, efficiently on it. I, I, I scored a ton with that front leg uh, lead roundhouse. So. You really have to be able to fit in with your opponent here, time him, switch it up, fake timing, and then he would come in and I would give him that front leg roundhouse right to the head. And uh, yeah, it, it can hurt. <laughs> it can hurt. There's, there's some times where I didn't even kick that hard and broke a guy's nose. So um, this is not, uh, a kick to be taken lightly. This is this is a knockout kick. You can you can knock out with this kick if you time it right, you hit it right in the right spot, the jaw, the nose. But um, you have to be you have to commit to it. Sometimes you have to be able to know that your opponent is he's already committing to coming in on you, and after his first technique, that's when you throw that up, and then. It gets him as he's in between his uh, first and second technique. So a little bit more. Let's go from this angle. So tying them. I got my alignment structure. And sometimes I wouldn't jump back necessarily. I would just stand there. Um, and not move so that you really gotta commit to it as he's coming in he's using his force coming in you're meeting him with that force <laughs> and it can do some real damage so 
Uh, with that, I'll wrap this up. I hope I didn't go over 10 minutes. Shit. Um, so episode four, lead leg roundhouse used for mixed martial arts. Uh, lead leg roundhouse to the head, to the face. Um, that's all talked about with, and then um, adding in Jeet Kune Do philosophy where you're using your longest reach to the closest distance to your opponent. That's Jeet Kune Do philosophy. Sifu Lee talked about using that front strong side the majority of the time for striking and defense. Um, and with that roundhouse, it's almost like Sifu Lee talked about fencing when you're using the, 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 the rapier, the rapier for fencing. And a roundhouse is like a, a rapier slash where it's like a, almost a whip here. And it really has to have that snap. Um, if you can find that snap uh, and train it enough, I've used it in Taekwondo to, to do some damage. Um, I really think it's something that people can can uh, utilize. So, front leg. Um, yeah, that's it. Thank you very much.